every year about 700 million people visit a zoo or an aquarium. And just for Europe, it's about 140 million people. So can you imagine all the data that you gather, instead of just being sent to scientists, reaching all those people? And uh, maybe, the, maybe we can help. So when people think about zoo, there are still some people that have quite an old-fashioned vision of zoo, um, like menagerie, which were aimed to entertain the public, and uh, who displayed as many animals as possible, quite often taken from the wild. But it dates back from the 19th century. And during the 20th century, the zoo and aquarium, they've, they've transformed. And now we are both more about conservation centers. And today, the world's mission for zoo and aquarium are about education, conservation, and research. Today, I will focus about education. So, in a zoo context, education is not formal scholar education. It's more about any learning opportunity that uh, someone can have. So, it can be about uh, entertainment, uh, experiment, experimenting something at the zoo. Uh, there are many ways to learn. And we don't want just to reach children, like scholar education, but even adults. Um, when we talk about zoo, something really important for us to focus is about conservation education. So, in the zoo world, does everyone agree with that? If you have a look at the mission statement of different organizations, you, you can see that, yes, every time, education, conservation education is written. So, we have here the IESA, which is the European Association of Zoo and Aquarium, um, the AZA, which is the same but for USA. Uh, we have the World Association of Zoo and Aquarium. And for me, as a public aquarium and not, special, not a zoo, uh, we have the UAC, the European as Union of U uh, Aquarium Curators. So everyone agrees about that. Really, one of our main missions is about education. So, what is expected from us? We have standards. So we do. You cannot just say, yes, yes, I do education, all the time, like it, really, really. No, uh, there are many things that are expected from us, and uh, today what I thought interesting was that, yes, as zoo or public aquarium, we have to, to give our visitors accurate information based on scientific facts. Um, there are many things that we can do to educate our guests. We can show them animals that are, in a, that are healthy, that behave in a normal way. That's really interesting for the people, you know, that is a real animal, not some goldfish in a bowl. Um, we can try to have experience for them, you know, using interactive programs, using presentation to, to really try to, to take them with us. But what every zoo or aquarium has is science. We know that all the visitors read them, but it's really one on one, one on one education program. You know, you put signs on the aquarium, on the displays, and you put a bit of information, and uh, everyone can access them at any time. So this is an example from my, my aquarium. And what do we find on those signs? Uh, you have a picture, quite often, to identify the species. You have some information about the taxonomy, the common names, the scientific names. You have a bit of biology, diet, the geographical range, um, the IUCN status, so a bit of conservation information. And we have the geographical range. Uh, the maps that you see here has been redrawn from a, maps, from a map found on GGBase. The picture comes from our, our own database. Uh, this example is from another aquarium in the Netherlands and uh, it's a sign that is put in front of a, of a tank to show all the species that people can find in the tank. If I have a look a bit more detailed, we can see again a picture of the fish to recognize the species, information about its name and scientific names and the size. This example comes from the Sign Art Aquarium in a, from the California Academy of Science. 
And again, you can see a picture to identify the species, some information about the name, some information about the biology, the ecosystem. Uh, this one is a bit different because it comes from an exhibition about uh, deep species, so we have information about the depth uh, where the fish live. This example comes from the Institut Oceanographique de Monaco. Uh, again, it's a big sign um, which aims to show all the species in the tank. And again, the same picture of the fish to recognize it, the name, a bit of biology, the range. Those examples are from Nausicaa and they are displayed on screen, which allows them to be a bit more uh, exhaustive, with more information. And uh, yeah, I saw that Fabrice used um, almost the same example. <laughs> And I will, I will show you the, the same QR code later. So, when we are looking for information, so as I told you earlier, the information must be based on scientific facts, must be accurate. So, where do we go? By discussing with colleagues, we, we, we realize that everyone, at least everyone that I know, uses fish base. So, Fabrice Telecia, he was, you know, uh, at our aquarium meeting and he was, hey guys, that's not friendly, you're using fish beds and you don't do anything for us, please help us. Um, so, we discussed with some colleagues and uh, Fabrice asked me to come and to show you our point of view as an end user of fish beds. What are we expecting from you? Sorry guys, it's like Christmas, I will ask you so much. Um, <laughs> So what we did first, we discussed from, with some colleagues and uh, we tried to identify some trends by the use that we make. Then we made a survey that we sent to about 2,000 aquaria, not aquaria, in fact, um, aquarium curators and keepers. I received about 70 answers. It might seem quite a little, but in fact, it was the first time that I received so many answers to, uh, to one of my questions. So, yes, it was quite exciting. Um, a few days after s sending the survey, I, I had one answer on, on my mailbox and I was oh, shit. And then I realized that many people had completed the survey, just they didn't tell me. And I was, ooh, answer, answer, so many answers. Um, all didn't answer, but uh, as I told you, <coughs> on some channels there are many keepers. And um, for in some ac aquaria, the curators are not always involved in educational goals, so that's why I didn't give so many answers. Many, many answers, um, answers come from Europe. It's not surprising as I sent the survey to the European Union of Aquarium Curators, and I had many answers from the US. It's because I sent the survey to a mailing list uh, which comprises many aquarium curators from the US. In total, we had nine, uh, respondents from 19 countries, uh, mainly in Europe. So the first question was quite easy, you know, warming them. Do you use fish base for educational purpose? And it was a big yes. More than 90% of the respondents knew fish about fish base and use it for educational purpose. About the information that they are looking for. Um, mostly it's about taxonomy distribution range, um, yeah, maximum size. In fact, what you will find here is all the information that I showed you earlier on North Science. Um, there was something that I found interesting. It was about the picture. Many people were looking for pictures, but I will show you up. But when I asked them the use that they make of the information, not so many people used the picture that they took from FreshBase or that they found from FreshBase directly. Many used them as aspiration to draw their map, like I did, uh, or to draw the pictures of the fish on the, on the label. Um, not surprisingly, many, many people are looking for information to make their signs, but many people are looking for information to recreate ecosystems. And that's really important for an educational purpose because um, earlier I told you that we have to show animal healthy acting in a normal way, but also the settings where they live, they must reflect natural ecosystems. 
Yes, my survey was about educational purpose for fish-based use, but um, there was a bit of a boundary. There is not only fish-based. When I asked them what other source do you know, uh, there was sea life-based, which is not, so, not a surprise as many of us display also invertebrates. Uh, IUCN wet list was quite often used. Uh, animal diversity web, CITES, and worms. They also had many other information sources. And earlier I told you we, have, we must have accurate information. You can see that Wikipedia and Wikimedia were, were used, are quite used. But what is trans? <laughs> It's interesting because they use Wikipedia uh, to translate the names of the species. And uh, mm. yes, it's really accurate when you want uh, to know the name in Deutsch or in German. You go to Wikipedia and you go to the German page and you have the name. Mm. Wikimedia is really useful to find pictures that you can use and that are free of rights. Good news. I asked them, are there any const um, constraints that emperors to use a fish base in they answered, no, <laughs> just, just, mm, no, but, <laughs> um, connectivity problems, but I think that we all know that, sometimes you have to go to micro sites, certain schedule, and also, what tools do you like, many people answer, mm, it's okay, I think I have that, uh, but uh, what came a lot was the picture, and uh, I think that my colleagues, that was the next presentation, we have some solution about that. Uh, also, some people would like to have a, an easier way to import the data from fish base. Um, I asked them, it was an open question, so they could ask anything, you know, like Christmas. Oh, sorry. Uh, when I say that fish base is maybe not user friendly enough, you can see that some people ask for identification keys, but they are on fish base. You can find them, but maybe it's not so easy to find. There, they had some interesting remarks. For example, someone asked for a way to uh, automatically import data, but then add, yeah, maybe there's a cost. Uh, user friendly interface. Another interesting point. Some responders talk, uh, they told me um, about finding a way for Aquarium to help fish base by updating the data. About how can we, con can we contribute? So I think that if you ask Big Aquarium for help, they will do it. My conclusion is fish base is really widely used by the Aquarium community. Uh, of course, there's a bias because when I sent the survey, I think that the people that don't know fish base, maybe they just didn't answer. Many colleagues, uh, they really appreciate fish base and they are willing to contribute if you ask for some help. And um, maybe we can find a way to make fish bear more friendly, uh, user friendly, not just for us because we are professional. I mean, I'm a biologist, I'm supposed to understand fish base and find a way to find the information I need. But if you want to share this information with all our visitors, no, they cannot just go on a specific page and say, oh, no, it's too much. And I have this example from Nausicaa. So as Fabrice told you earlier, they have this QR code that redirects the visitors to fish base. But if they come to fish base and see just the, the page like that, I don't think that they are they can use it, in fact. So before leaving you, I wanted to show those comments. Uh, I think that it, shows, it will show you that the Aquarium community is really grateful for all the good job that you do, uh, gathering all that the data that you can use. And uh, so thank you very much for all the work you do. <laughs>